let the spooky videos ensue. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, if you haven't been here before, welcome. So today's video is going to be what I like to call a Halloween video. I am excited to make videos for fall and Halloween and I just match the words together and call them Halloween. This is the first of many Halloween videos, hopefully, and I am doing a book video today. I have never done a book video on my channel before, but I am an avid reader. I'm in multiple book clubs and that's something that me and my friends talk about a lot is like our favorite books. So I have compiled a list of books, my fall TBR. So so there's a lot of books here. There's actually 20 on this list total. And the reason that it's so many books is because I count it as kind of like September, October, and November. So this is not just one month's TBR, but TBR for like the entire fall season. So the books on this list are going to be the ultimate cozy vibes, mystery, spooky, romance, thriller, horror books, all the ones that are on my list to read this season and hopefully you will add some to your list as well. So if you like this video make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe. I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers and once I hit a thousand subscribers YouTube will give me some AdSense for the content I'm currently creating and that would be absolutely amazing. So go ahead and subscribe if you're into these videos. There will be more coming, especially if you like them. And let's get into the video. So there are going to be five categories. So you can kind of skip around depending upon what your book interests are, what your vibes are, and there's gonna be something for everyone. There are going to be the fall romances. There are going to be the cozy fall mysteries that make you feel like you live in the British countryside while sitting next to a fireplace drinking a cup of tea. There are going to be the thriller horror books that will keep you on the edge of your seat, the badass witches category, and the spooky Halloween vibes. So those are the five categories that I am going for this season. I am super excited to hop in. So to start it off, I am going to start with the fall romance books that I pulled. So a lot of these books kind of jump categories, like maybe it's spooky but it's also a romance, or maybe it has a witch in it for badass witches but it also has a thriller aspect. So these can kind of all be put into different places, this is just how I kind of ordered them. So the first book we have for fall romances is Go Hex Yourself. Now, these books, a lot of them I got from the library because your girl does not have the bank account to be running around and purchasing a thousand million books, but I'm an avid fan of the library, so if you too are like me, a lot of these books you can get from the library, which is amazing. So this book is all about Reggie Johnson, where she answers an ad in the paper to work at a magic shop, and instead she realizes that she's actually applied to become a familiar for a real witch. And the job has some perks, room and board, excellent pay, and being able to be an apprentice of a powerful witch. But the biggest problem is that there is a warlock, Ben Magnus, her employer's nephew, and he is arrogant, insufferable, maddening, and so she hates him. So you can kind of see where this romance is going. It seems like it's going to be an enemies to lover vibe, which I love. It's very spooky, magical. It seems like it's not too much horror. It's more on the soft side with like positive witchery and witchcraft going on. So I'm really excited for this one. Definitely a good one to start with. And this book is by Jessica Clare. The next book I don't have with me because it is extremely popular and the line at the library was very long, but this this is November 9th by Colleen Hoover, so less of like a spooky romance and more of just like a fall romance. And this is all about Fallon who meets Ben, an aspiring novelist, and she's supposed to be moving across the country the next day, but Fallon ends up spending her last day in LA with Ben and they kind of fall for each other. And then every year on the same day, November 9th, they meet up again to kind of like rekindle their relationship. So it's one of those love stories where it's like they meet up at the same time every year and it's kind of like, will it end in heartbreak or will this be like a love story of the ages? So I'm really excited to read this one. I've heard so many good things about Colleen Hoover and I've had a couple of friends tell me that November 9th is one of their favorite, favorite books. So I am so excited to get into that one. So the next book is called Paybacks a Witch. And look at this cover, it's so beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. It's got that like beautiful purple 
slash gold witchy vibe and it's just absolutely gorgeous so this one is by Lana Harper and it's supposed to be kind of like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina which I watched all the way through and I really liked the first couple of seasons and basically it is about Emmy Harlow who is a witch and she's kind of moved away from home doesn't really want to be there anymore but there is some sort of spell casting competition so she ends up having to come home to be with her family she's trying to avoid this guy Gareth Blackmore who she had a thing with but it seems like he broke her heart but it also sounds like he broke her best friend's heart as well as this new person that Emmy meets Talia and basically they decide that they are going to get revenge on Gareth Blackmore for being such a vile piece of man trash and Emmy realizes that she can't stop thinking about Talia so there's clearly some relationship blooming there as well as a revenge story to get back at Gareth for all the shit he put them through. Next we have a book that my friends have been telling me to read. They read it, The X Hex, and they said it was just like a cute little witchy romance so I'm really excited for this one. So this is all about Vivian Jones who is a witch and had a terrible relationship gone wrong so she decided to cast a hex on the man who did her wrong and she doesn't think that it'll do anything but cause him like a bad hair day or two. Then Reese Penhollow, the descendant of the man who jilted this witch, comes to town and the minute he kind of steps foot into town all of a sudden one disaster after another are following this man around. So suddenly she's realizing that the hex she cast on this man years ago has come to haunt the descendants of the man as well and kind of has put the entire town in jeopardy. So it looks like they have to band together, work together to save the town, and it is by Aaron Sterling. Okay, so that was the love stories, the witchy fall vibe romances. The next category is cozy fall mysteries that make you feel like you live in the British countryside while sitting next to a fireplace and drinking a warm cup of tea. The cozy fall mysteries to start we have In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. So this book is kind of a mystery. It might fall into the category of thriller a little bit but I've heard a lot of good things about it as well as the fact that it is very similar to If We Were Villains and A Secret History. It's got that vibe of like college campus murder a decade ago and trying to figure out like who killed who and why. So it says that Jessica Miller is returning to campus and basically one of her friends died years ago and someone is not going to let this murder go and is determined to figure out who did it. So it's kind of like a dark academia spooky mystery vibe and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I absolutely loved If We Were Villains. It's one of my favorite reads of my entire life and I read it this year and gave it five stars so I'm obsessed with it but I think this one is going to be really great. I'm looking for more books that are like If We Were Villains so if you read any and you have any suggestions drop them in the comments down below. I love a book suggestion. This one is by Ashley Winstead. Next we have The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evil in Hardcastle by Stuart Turton and I am currently reading this one right now. It is really good. It is all about a Groundhog Day-esque scenario where this person has to live the same day over and over again until they figure out who murdered Evil in Hardcastle. So the whole idea is that each day he lives the day again from a different perspective and he gathers more and more information to figure out who the murderer is. And I've heard that there's some pretty big twists and turns in this one. The next book we have... I'm so excited about this one. And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I'm a massive Agatha Christie fan. I absolutely love her work. I have read her first three or four books and I am obsessed with them. So this one is a standalone novel and most of them you don't need to read in order, but this one specifically is a standalone novel. So yeah, this book is about 10 people who were summoned to a weekend at this private island, but the host is nowhere to be found. All the guests have something in common that they're unwilling to reveal, and they're basically trying to figure out who the murderer is as one by one people start dying. So this one is a classic people are obsessed with, and then there were none. And I think it's going to be a great book. Next, we are on to thriller horror books that will keep you on the edge of your seat. 
So first up, we have the Final Girl Support Group. So this is by Grady Hendrix. And basically, this is almost like a parody of the Final Girl in the movie, the one who survives all of these slasher-esque killings. And this is a support group for Final Girls. So all these Final Girls, the ones who survived the horror stories, horror movies, Esque scenarios. They meet in this group to talk about their trauma and all of a sudden one of them goes missing and so they have realized that someone knows about their support group, knows about the final girls and is trying to take them out one by one and basically like how they survive this secondary horror movie that they've been launched into. So next we have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I have heard that Riley Sager is like a really great novelist and they do a lot of really great mystery novels so I I think you could probably pick any of them up and really enjoy them but they're definitely more thriller scary horror vibes and so lock every door is all about this person who goes and stays in an apartment building to basically apartment sit for this person in Manhattan. Slowly this girl starts to realize that this apartment building is not what it seems to be. She meets someone who ends up confessing that there are dark secrets to the apartment building only for that person to go missing like the next day. And this girl Jules decides to go searching for the truth about the apartment building and her friend who went missing. This one looks really good. I'm excited to jump into the Riley Sager novels because I have multiple. So next we have Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and I am super excited for this one. I've heard great things about this book. So this book is all about Noemi who gets a letter from her cousin kind of frantically saying that something is wrong with her newlywed husband and family. So Noemi goes to take care of her cousin and check it out and is kind of launched into this world of this like hierarchy in this home and the secrets that the family is keeping and that they hold so i think it's going to be really interesting it's kind of like it's i feel like it's kind of similar to lock every door in the sense that it's like the building is holding secrets and she's trying to figure out what's going on and whether or not she can even escape and the last book i have in the thriller slash horror category is another riley sager novel called final girls which is you know ironic because we have the Final Girls support group, and when I bought this one, I didn't know I would be getting this one from the library. I think they are going to be relatively similar, but this one is less about a support group and more about an individual who survived a horror movie-esque attack and is one of the Final Girls, only to realize that the two others that she's never actually met before, but she knows of these other final girls, have also started to go missing, and so she's like, who is the murderer? Who is taking these girls? So I will let you know if these are super similar. I know that this is like very similar vibes, similar color scheme, similar horror-esque, but if I like one, maybe I'll really like the other, or maybe one will be like top tier and one will fall flat, so we don't know. I will definitely let you know once I finish them. I don't know why I said that was the last one. We have a couple more. Okay, so the next one we have is called Plain Bad Heroines. This book is about a school for girls where girls keep going missing and dying. And there is a woman who writes a story about the history of the school years after it closes down. And they decide they're going to do a movie adaptation of the horrors that have happened at the school. And so people start coming back to act and participate in the movie only to be entangled in the terrible story that started there. People starting to die and go missing. So it seems like this is kind of like a discussion of the horrors of Hollywood as well as kind of the history of these girls who have died there and like how the future and the past is like entangled and it's by emily m danforth and last for this category we have verity another book by colleen hoover this one's also very famous but i feel like everything colleen writes is pretty well read at this point so this is all about lo and ashley who has been hired to finish a woman named verity crawford's story she was writing a book but then became sick and was unable to finish it so Lowen comes to their home to basically look through her notes and see what like where the book was going and start writing only to find 
a unfinished biography that Verity never intended anybody to read. And basically it's kind of a messed up romance story because Lowen seems to really be interested in Verity's husband Jeremy. And so Lowen is trying to figure out if she should give this manuscript to Jeremy to see if he would leave his wife. So it seems like a very tangled love story. I've heard a lot of good things about Verity and I think it would be really fun to read. So the next category we have is Badass Witches. And this is kind of a category I created for books that were about witches but were less about romance and more about women just being powerful. And so the first book in this group is We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. And this is about a girls field hockey team who get into witchcraft and start winning all of the tournaments. And so I think it's just about their journey into witchcraft in order to win their like championship and just the trials that they go through. So it's more of just like a female badass story about witchery and I thought it looked really good. So the next book we have in this category is The Once and Future Witches. So this one seems really interesting because it's basically about a, a group of witches who I believe are sisters and they are fighting for the right to vote and have become suffragists. People are coming after them because they're witches and they want to burn them at the stake, but also these women are just fighting for the right to vote. So it's really interesting that like this is a book that I think will be different than any of the others. Literally, women witches trying to fight for the right to vote. Like, what more could you ask for? The next book is Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch. So this is also like a similar story to the Once and Future Witches, except for basically this woman is accused of witchcraft when a woman who doesn't like her in the town claims that she made her ill with her like herb work. And so her son realizes that his mother is at risk of basically being murdered and also losing everything. So he decides to pursue his career in science to prove that she's not a witch and that it's not witchcraft and to save her reputation and so i think that this one is a similar vibe in the sense that it's more like historical fiction about a woman who was accused of being a witch and how she worked through that so the next one i also don't have because it's very popular right now but it is called a discovery of witches a lot of people have been talking about this one and have been saying that it's like twilight but for adults i've heard that about a hundred times so i guess you're going to hear it for the hundred and first time from me this book is by deborah harkness and is in the all souls series it's the first book and basically it is about this woman diana who is descended from an old distinguished line of witches she finds this sorcerer's book and decides she wants nothing to do with it she doesn't want the trouble so she kind of like banishes it back to the stacks in the library but because she opened it i guess she has drawn a bunch of fantastical creatures in her direction so they all kind of like descend upon the library unfortunately diana is the only one who can break the book's spell so clearly this is not going to keep her out of the drama of the underworld and she basically meets a vampire named matthew and they gradually create this alliance slash kind of like love story-esque aspect and so i think it's going to be really interesting to see how the book ends the last category we have is the spooky halloween vibes these are kind of like the classics in my opinion so the first one we have in this category is Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This book is so well known. It is a movie, but I've never read the book. I wanted to see what the hype was for myself. This is all about two sisters who are witches, but their family was cursed a long time ago. So basically the men that they love end up dying. And so it kind of goes through their adolescence into adulthood when they are meeting men and falling in love and the crazy things that happen afterwards and how they deal with it. There is some witchcraft, there are some crazy ants, there is some bringing people back to life and also maybe the breaking of a spell that's haunted them for decades and decades. This one is a classic. Alice Hoffman is a great writer and I think it is going to be amazing. The next book I have is October Country by Ray Bradbury. Like, look at this book. It's like one of those, like, old copies. 
It's got the tan binding and this like ancient looking cover with the artwork on the front. Ray Bradbury is one of my favorite writers. I read Fahrenheit 451 when I was in school and it is to this day one of my favorite books. I absolutely love it. So I'm so excited to read October Country. So this is a collection of spooky short stories, basically perfect for the October Halloween time of year. It covers a lot of different creepy crawly things and I think it's just supposed to be a great fall read. I've heard a couple of people say that like this is a classic they absolutely love it to read it every single year and I think it's gonna be so much fun just like easy to get through I mean like short stories are always kind of easy to pause on easy to get through so I think it's going to be just as spooky as everyone says Ray Bradbury is just amazing at that kind of thing this like this just this discomfort that he can create through his writing and I think this is going to be awesome and the last book I want to talk about is Hocus Pocus. I don't have it with me, but I do own it. It's at my parents' house. It is such a quirky, easy, fun Halloween read. It is obviously based off of the movie, and the version that I have also has the part two, and that is the new movie that's coming out this year. So if you want to get a little sneak peek of what the new movie is going to be about, you can get the Hocus Pocus book. It's like really thick, but it's super easy easy to get through. It's cute. I like to put it up on my desk to have it more as like a display, but I read it last year and I absolutely loved it and I want to read it again this year or maybe listen to it via audiobook. It's just kind of like the perfect classic Halloween read. Just like you watch Hocus Pocus every year, I'd love to get into the habit of reading it every year and I think it's great if you like have kids or you have like younger family members you can read it to them out loud as like a bedtime story it is really 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 cute and the book is just beautiful and with that that is all the books that I have on my fall TBR my Halloween TBR I am so excited to get into the fall cozy spooky season with you all I absolutely love reading I love books and I love fall so expect more content like this. Let me know if you add any of these to your TBR list. Let me know if you have any suggestions of books you think I should read this fall. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all those youtube -y things. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys next week with another one, another Halloween seasonal video. Bye!